Hey Scrapbookers, it's Trisha Morris here at Club Scrap with the Industrial Evolution Special Release Assembly Workshop. I've got my instructions printed and I also have the collection here along with the usual 12 inch uh, bypass style guillotine trimmer and my accordion pocket file. As I always say, if you don't yet have the accordion pocket file, now would be a great time to find out where you can get the information how to make one. For yourself, it's a wonderful way for us to stay organized using as little space as possible. And then you can just place that accordion pocket file under the base of your trimmer that holds it up and uh, keeps us organized. I've got my goodies that we've included in a little bag here and the beautiful ribbons that coordinate and the manila tags. I'm going to set all that aside and consult my instructions to figure out the best order for us to sort the paper so that we're ready for our trimming phase. So right out of the gates, let's just find, there should be two plain ivory papers in this collection. So you just need to make sure you check both sides of the paper to make sure it's plain on both sides and just place those papers on your trimmer base. And then for sorting the papers, I find it's easiest to hold them in your arm so that you can uh, sort through them kind of like if you were at a record shop. <laughs> okay, then we're gonna find one of the compass prints. So this, this um, gorgeous print has the compass and then some larger text on it on the right side. I'm gonna put that face down on my work surface. And then the gear print. I love the brighter blues in, in this um, particular refresh of the print. So we'll place that face down. Then I want you to find one dark blue and then a gold plane. So we'll keep going ahead here. We're going to find one of the light blue planes so you can contrast the dark blue with, with the light blue. That's the difference there. Followed by one brick plane and then we, we have some cut aparts and you'll find those usually at the back of your uh, collated papers. Um, this one has four blue journaling prompts on it, and then the other cut apart has several border strips on there. You can flip that over to the plain side as well. Okay, now let's finish sorting the rest. We're going to need uh, two more blue, navy blue, the dark one. Dark blue planes, two of those, followed by two more brick planes. So I have two here. Then the other gear print, and then a light blue plane, and then finally the other compass print, finishing with the gold plane. So with all of those papers sorted, I'm going to flip everything over. And just to tell you how I determine the order of the pieces, I simply start with the first item called for in the trimming instructions. So I had an ivory, ivory compass print, gear print, and so on. After I go all the way through the end of page three with the cut aparts listed, then I start with the working backwards from layouts seven and eight. I grab the base for layout eight and seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And um, then once that's completed, you shouldn't have any more paper left, <laughs> provided all went well, and we will we'll begin the cutting process. I have a nice warm up for us today. Our first cut will be on one sheet of ivory. We'll just cut at six inches and then stack the two strips and trim horizontally at eight and four. All right, you just should have made eight or six pieces of the same size. They're all four by sixes. We're going to sort them, take two of them and put them in pocket one and two. Or if you don't, if you're not using this, put them in, a, in one of four piles, then take two more. We'll place them in pocket three and four. And the final two will go in pocket five and six. Easy as that. Now take the next ivory. This one we're gonna trim at six and a quarter. Rotate and cut at 11 and three quarters. Again, that's 11 and three quarters. Eight and a half, four and a quarter. Now you made two photo mats that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Both of these go in pocket seven and eight. And now we have this narrow strip here. We're going to cut this one horizontally at five and a half and two and three quarters. These two rectangles will also go in pocket seven and eight. And then in the process, we did create a, a few 
just two little tiny scraps. Now as I'm working here, I just want to mention that if I'm going too fast for you and you're watching on YouTube, you do have the choice of uh, pushing on the gear settings or the gear or the settings button to slow me down to um, a, a speed that's more approachable for you. And then as you practice this method quite a bit, you will become proficient enough where you can do it live with me, no problem. The remaining piece of ivory will cut horizontally at eight and four. Okay, so one of these, because they're all the same, one will go in pocket three and four, and the other two will go in pocket seven and eight. Now we move on to the compass print. We're going to place this into the trimmer so the compass is on the right, or in other words, right side up into the trimmer. We'll cut at eight and a quarter, and three and three quarters. Okay, now this narrow strip, pocket one and two, and I will place that in the pocket at an angle so I can still see the um, labels on the left edge. The remaining two strips will go on in pocket five and six also at an angle. And next I'll grab the gear print. Now this one, if you want to do it exactly the way I did it, I'm placing this one so the brightest gear nests are in the lower left corner. And then we'll trim this one at seven and four. All right, now take this piece and place it in pocket three and four, and then the other two uh, strips, pocket seven and eight, and moving on to the dark blue. Now, a lot of the instructions that are coming down the pipeline have us doing almost the exact same thing. So the first cut here is going to be at ten and a half and six and a quarter. So you get a lot of practice with those two numbers. Now rotate and trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. So again, we just now have our first four and a quarter by six and a quarter mats. That goes in pocket three and four. Now this rectangle will trim horizontally at six and three. These rectangles will go in pocket one and two, and it does create a tiny little scrap. We'll set that aside. And then now we have this wider strip. We'll trim this one horizontally at six and a quarter. This makes our third mat, which will go in pocket five and six. And then this other not quite uh, photo mat size is pocket one and two. And then we have this strip going in pocket three and four. That's the entire piece. Moving on to the gold. We're going to start out the same exact way. Ten and a half. Six and a quarter. Rotate and do the same thing again. Eight and a half. Four and a quarter. Okay, so these mats go in pocket five and six. The smaller rectangle, once again, six and three. These go in pocket one and two, and we did create a small piece, but I actually used this one, <laughs> so I'm going to place it in pocket three and four. Okay, now we have this larger strip trimmed horizontally at six and a quarter. I know they're different sizes, but we're going to use them both on layouts five and six, as well as this strip, pocket five and six. The light blue is just slightly different now. We're going to make some uh, paper ribbons, as I call them. They're tiny little strips here. So we're starting at 11 and 3 quarters. A large number makes a small piece. Then 11 and a half. 10 and 3 quarters. And 8. And then 4. So we're going to take one of those 4x12s and just cut it in half at 6. Both of these pieces are used in layouts 3 and 4. Take the next 4x12 and we're going to cut it into um, three pieces of equal size. So our first trim will be at 11 and a quarter, then 7 and a half, 3 and 3 quarters. All three of these will go in pocket 5 and 6. And this last little piece is a scrap. Now we're going to cut this one into uh, squares. So our first cut's at 11, and then 8 and a quarter, 5 and a half, 
two and three quarters. And here we have four squares, and they're all going to go in pocket three and four. This little guy goes in pocket seven and eight, believe it or not. Now we have a wider strip and then two skinny strips. Take one wide and one skinny. They both go in pocket five and six. And then this last guy goes in one and two. Next up, we have the brick. We'll trim at 11. 10 and a quarter. 10 and one quarter. And six and a quarter. This is kind of going to be like a review now. I'm going to rotate and cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. These two pieces are used in layouts one and two. And we're going to kind of do another repeat of this as well. We'll cut this rectangle at six and three. Now we've got these two rectangles. We'll file them in pocket seven and eight. And this tiny little strip is used again in layout three and four. <laughs> Now we have this um, four inch piece, we'll trim it in half, cut at six. Both of these go in seven and eight. Now we have two strips, one narrow, one wide. They both go in one and two. All right, next up we have the cut aparts and we did make a recent change to the way these work. Number one is I provide very detailed trimming instructions for you in the instructions. And secondly, we've eliminated all of the registration marks that tell you where to cut each thing so that they don't mar the final uh, outcome. But we also did add some registration marks to the perimeter and allowed an eighth of an inch of excess paper to remain so that you as the consumer and the designer can start off at a really nice um, accurate trim. So I'm gonna bring that registration mark to the corner of my trimmer and try to get it so it lines up with the edge of that stainless steel blade. And when I make a nice slice, I can rotate and then repeat for this corner again. Line it up at top and bottom. Now this time I can go ahead and look at over here at 12 and confirm I'm lined up at top and bottom, and I am. And then one more rotation, line up at 12. Very good. You can dispose of the excess eighth inch scraps. All right, now I always want to begin my trimming process with the strips on the right. Remove the smallest pieces first, and at this point, if you want, you can follow the written instructions, but I will, um, for the most part, every cut that you make will land on the nearest quarter inch, so if you can look left and then look right to confirm. Our first cut's at 10 and 3 quarters, then 10 and a quarter, 9 and 3 quarters, seven and a quarter and three and three quarters That's a lot of numbers now rotate we'll cut at 11 eight and a quarter five and a half two and three quarters okay let's file all of these journaling prompts the one with the um, optometry lenses on it and a gear, that's seven and eight. Then we have the glasses here, that's one and two. The eye charts on three and four. And then the, the key is on five and six. So those are distributed one per uh, double page spread. Then Be Splendid, also five and six. And then I'll pick up the next strip. We'll cut at nine and six. Now for this one, I am going to use that light gray mark written on here to fussy cut this image. And then also same for the glasses. So I'm gonna use scissors to separate these into two elements. The glasses go on one and two, and then this element goes on page three and four. Then you do have the key with on the tag, that's three and four. And then the bicycle, seven and eight. Okay, next strip here. We'll trim at 10, seven and a half, five, two and a half. All right, these two squares, they're gonna go on layouts three and four. Now this one we're gonna separate into two separate elements and that will be vertically at one and a quarter. 
was actually kind of a square. So <laughs> the light bulb is going to go in five and six, and then the pointy hand, three and four. Uh, to invent, five and six. And then this cool clock, um, also five and six. All that's left are some border strips. Let's take the narrowest ones. One of them will go in one and two, and the other in five and six. And then there's nothing like a dream to create the future. That's three and four. No kidding. I'm dreaming of a bright future. Okay, I'm repeating the removal of the perimeter again by trying to line these up as accurately as I can with the edge of my blade for my first cut. Rotate and repeat until you've removed the entire perimeter. All right, we'll begin again with the strips on the right. First cut will be at 11. 10, nine and a quarter, eight and a half, seven and a quarter, and four. Rotate and we'll trim at 11 and five and a half. All right, this piece will go in pocket one and two. And then invention, five and six. Have this guy, seven and eight. And the next strip will cut at 11 and a half, eight and three quarters, and six. The large tag, seven and eight. Then these guys, uh, one and two. The lens, seven and eight and this little tiny guy three and four all right now we have just strips left to go so we've made our last cut once upon a time that's going to be on five and six then you have this bluish strip one and two and the other one just like it goes in three and four the last two will go on page seven and eight and that concludes all of our trimming. Congratulations. I'm going to remove my pocket carefully from my trimmer and then lay it on its back. One of the things I love is that when all is said and done, this is these are the pieces that you will not use. Just four tiny little scraps. You could probably find a home for this guy on layout three and four. In fact, I'm pretty sure of it. So I'm going to set that aside. Maybe we'll remember to use it. Now I've turned to page five of my instructions, and I'm going to look at layouts seven and eight, this image on the bottom of the page. That's what I have prepped in front of me. So take your entire stack of remaining 12 by 12 papers, the whole stack, and put that to the left of the center of your workspace and then slide the top sheet over. And what that will do is give you now, right in front of you, the base for layouts seven and eight. When we're done with this dry fit process, the layout eight will be on the, the bottom of your stack, layout one will be on top, and then you can go back down and adhere everything, then finally add your pictures and journaling. So that's the whole, the whole method right there. Now would be a great time to empty the contents of pocket D. And I usually try to just hold all of that stuff in my hand, and that way it's a little bit easier to deal things out. I mean, it kind of depends on the size of everything in that pocket, but if you set it on the page, it's just kind of going to be in the way. All right, so I have this larger a piece from the gear print. I'm going to put that flush on the top edge of the left side. Then I'll take the smaller piece and put that on the bottom edge on the right. Each of these pieces has a little uh, message little title to rest against it. it takes time it takes courage to grow up and become who you really are okay then there should be some larger ivory photo mats so the larger ones go on the right side and those get a, a companion brick so it'll be ivory brick and then another ivory with brick next you can tuck a little journaling prompt underneath along with the um, bicycle tag on this right edge. And then on the left, we're gonna be using this larger vertical tag, two ivory rectangle, or two brick rectangles nested with two ivory rectangles. What I like about this is how it mirrors what's going on on the right side. And then you can, you should be able to fit these shorter ivory uh, 
photo mats vertically in the corner. And then you can fussy cut this element, completely cut this from the paper if you want, and then you can cut a V into the tip of this. Just one short edge, a simple little V, and then tuck that in as well. Now I'll just spend a minute or two reviewing the, the finishing steps as far as embellishments go. What you can do here is trim away the outside triangular shapes from the tag and punch a hole in the middle and for that you can use any quarter inch punch or if you happen to have a crocodile I just use that. Now here's a nifty trick for the, the final tip. Just take a piece of the beautiful light blue cotton ribbon and like a two inch piece is plenty and thread it through the hole and tape the ends on the back. Then separately from that just tie a regular standard bow and adhere it so there's no connection between this piece and this one. I just think it's a cool optical illusion um, that is created by the way we attach that ribbon. I really love the look of that. Now on the other layout, let me show you a few finishing touches here. The um, tag, of course, the triangles were trimmed again from the corner and I just used a craft knife and um, cutting mat and ruler to do that. You could also do it with just scissors punch a hole in the top of the tag. And in this case, I just thread that same ribbon, that light blue color ribbon, through the tag and then tape the ends to the back of the layout. This has been fussy cut and then I sponge some earth ink onto the trimmed piece just to sort of hide any imperfections in my cutting. And then down at the bottom, you can see the trimmed banner. And then I pierced through the paper with a, a paper piercing tool or an awl, just pierce through, and then you can thread one of the bronze brads onto the sequin shaped, sequ uh, the gear shaped sequin rather, and then um, you can spread those out on the back as well. And I think it's just kind of a cool finishing touch to this page. Okay, so with that, I'm going to pick up only the dark blue base of layout seven and place it on top of layout eight and then slide again. So now in front of me I have two brick planes and those should match the required base papers for layouts five and six. And those uh, are shown at the top of page five. Let's go back to our pocket and see if we can just grab everything out of there. Might be a little bit difficult if you have some smaller pieces. Once again, I'm gonna hold them in the dealing position and the larger piece here of that compass print will be on the right, and then the narrower piece with the compass on it will be on the left. We're gonna flank this with the wider of the two light blue strips, and then there should be another strip of a similar color to the print that we can nest on top of that, just for kind of a, a nice subdivide here. Then the narrower light blue paper strip goes on the right. You will notice another blue piece across the bottom that was done with ribbon, just to give you a heads up in case you're wondering where the other blue strip is. And let's um, add this nested border strip down here. We can take a, let's see, there are gonna be some different sizes of this gold color. So we gotta be kind of aware of that. Three of them will be the same, one will be shorter. So the one of the larger ones will go horizontally and then the smaller one will go vertically. And you can nest one of your ivories on top of the large one, that's how you know. And then this cut apart gets nested on top of the, the shorter one. And then you can kind of box that in nicely with an even perimeter all the way around. After you fussy cut and perhaps even ink the edges of the clock, that can go in this spot and maybe pop dotted. That'll look really nice. Then on the left side, we'll have our vertical photo mats to balance the horizontal. There should be three light blue rectangles. Now these are not squares, so just make sure they're positioned vertically so that they fit within this space. If you did it this way, I don't think that they would fit with equal spacing. Um, let's see, now there's a nested navy. So you got navy and then ivory on top of that. And then take the journaling prompt that's gonna go here, fussy cut the light bulb, you can pop dot that. You can add a uh, ribbon to the top of this and pop dot it. And then here you can do some brads and sequin combination to attach the bee splendid down over here. That's the last paper element I have. So let's review the finished embellished page. Not a lot to address here, just a reminder that this is the ribbon and not paper. 
this has been pop dotted. Everything else is pretty straightforward. And then on layout F5, we have the beautiful a satiny, silky, uh, dark blue ribbon topping the tag. I just used scissors to, to round that. And again, you could ink the edges as well, just to kind of even out any imperfections. I love how this looks pop dotted. And then this one too, I pop dotted it. And you can see the Brad sequin combination making a really cool um, addition to the outside edges there. At this point, we can slide the brick base for layout five over on top of layout six. One more slide and a page turn will bring us to layouts three and four. So this again is on page four at the bottom, layout three and four, and then empty the contents of pocket three and four. That's probably the biggest habit to try to get into is just, I was working backwards from your pocket sometimes um, and before I kind of got used to or the habit of this, I would go to pocket one and two when I would start and nothing was making any sense. <laughs> so uh, just be aware of that. Now this next piece, will go on the left. And I do notice that it looks a little different than my original. Um, I did end up trimming the paper a little differently, but it doesn't affect the outcome. Okay, so a dark blue with a nesting border strip across the bottom. Then just above that, you can add two horizontal dark blue mats nested, once again, with ivory. It looks so nice to have those double mats. Then you can take one of the jumbo, this is a really gigantic tag, isn't it? A jumbo manila tag. And we'll add a vertical journaling prompt to this. Eventually you'll fussy cut this. And then we have these little pieces that we filed. Those are gonna be tucked under there. As we find them, we'll add them. Here's the, here's the little brick colored one. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add my blue colored one to that spot. Plus, there's a tiny little cut apart. I trimmed that out, right? To, I moved all the ivory and I put that in this spot as well. Just some little banners. I'll show you in the finished one how cool that turned out. Okay, now on the right, I'm going to start out with a series of light blue squares. If you use a grid ruler to help keep things level and straight, that's a great time to do it. It'll just help you keep those really nice and professional looking. And then you can flank that strip. The decorative element. So this quote is broken out into two pieces. If um, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, that will go in the second spot. And then if only if one only remembers to turn on the light, that'll be down here. Two vertical light blues, a horizontal ivory, and then we've got our little key tag. You can add some ribbon to that, and then the pointing finger we can add to this as well. For finishing touches, check this out. I added a small loop of that silk ribbon. T just taped it to the back of each one of these before I adhered them into the place. They'll overlap the strip a little bit, that's okay. And then added that same ribbon to the tag, trimmed the corners and popped out of that. On page three, I did quite a bit more for this cent centerpiece collage element here. So you can see I cut little tips into those quarter inch scrap rescues. <laughs> I love that I was able to rescue them. And I used book binding glue from a needle tipped applicator to attach them because when you're working with small stuff like that, usually no matter what kind of adhesive you're using, it's too wide for the project. So that's where this guy comes in. And then I repeated the same type of thing, the Brad sequin combo. I just pierced through the tag um, all the way to the back actually through the entire layout and added those kind of a smattering. I love how that looked. An odd number. One, two, three, four, five. These two elements, the ink, the edges were inked with earth and pop dotted. And then I just tied some of that satin ribbon to the top of the tag as well. And that just kind of translates or, or carries through the tag topper from the other side. Okay, now we'll slide this on top lift this last piece up of the uh, compass print and now we should have what we need in front of us layouts one and two if we empty pocket labeled one and two sometimes this method just you know i'm reminded of how magical it really can be <laughs> okay now this guy on to the left edge and then we've got of the two burgundy strips, the wider one will go here, 
and the narrower one goes there. Then we'll nest with some decorative elements here. This border strip should fit, and this one. Just above it, we'll place another blue, light blue strip to carry some of that color in. I needed it because the um, journaling prompt has that bluish color. I needed it represented on here somehow. Let's see, next in my hand, I've got these two vertical burgundy mats. I'll get rid of the brick colored mat. Those will go down low. And then there should be a dark blue rectangle for above. And this, once trimmed, or even before you trim it, will fit beautifully on top of that. Okay, the other large manila tag happens to be the same exact height as the journaling prompt. How cool is that? So then I can add these wonderful gold elements to it. Now, if you have one picture rather than two, you'd like to put into the spot. Karen does this a lot. Just spread it out over the, if you have a horizontal picture, just spread it out over both pieces. No one will ever know that there's a crack between them. <laughs> okay, then two vertical mats over here. I didn't want to cover this. I don't know. It's just a thing. Um, here we got the glasses. Just fussy cut them and you can pop dot them here. Then on the left, we got the little element. You can nest, should nest with the navy, and then down over here, just below it. Perfect place to tuck that. For finishing touches, I took my grid ruler and centered it left to right across this border strip here. So the six would be here and here. Then I took my paper piercing tool and you can see I pierced it every inch. I started at zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. And then I had a little pierce every spot where I needed to add some adhesive. So I just took my book binding glue, added it to every dot, and then finished it with the really pretty holographic sort of gear sequin. I love these. They're just, they're, they're lightweight, they're really one dimensional, and they add so much. My glasses look pretty cool over there. I pulled the same trick with the manila tag here. One piece of ribbon is just wrapped around to the back and taped. The second piece of ribbon, I just tied a basic bow and adhered it to the tag. So it's really on there in two pieces. The illusion is that it's one piece of ribbon and I absolutely love that look. For layout one, I used scissors to simply cut the oval shape from the cut apart, then punch on either side of this element. Then just thread the ribbon through, and as I did on that other page, just bring the ends around at the back. It, I just love the easy look. It, you don't have a lumpy knot to deal with. Um, to me, the coolest lumpy thing in this whole collection is this incredible steampunk uh, key charm. I just love it. It's It was worth it, right? I'm really glad I picked this out. It was a great finishing touch for this marvelous industrial evolution kit. It combines art from an old 2014 retreat kit called Nice to See You and our, I think it was February of 2018, Steamworks collection. So this has been a fun one. Once you um, get everything adhered onto these pages, you'll be able to add your pictures and journaling. To close, I'm gonna share a quick bag reloading trick with you. Now forgive me if you've seen this before, it's just really helpful for our newbies to discover a fun way to recycle your kit bag. So open it up if, it, if you've closed it, make sure the sticky area is at the top, and then also make sure the sticky flap of the bag is facing away from you. So it's sticky here. I'm going to literally stick this to my work surface, then flip the bottom of the bag forward. The next step is to simply load your layouts right into the bag. And yes, all the little pieces that you so carefully placed will fall to the bottom, but at least they're gonna be exactly where they're supposed to be. What I usually do is then make my instructions position so that they're right in the front so I know what's inside the bag. And then insert any unallocated ribbon and embellishments. Now let's just say you do this up to this far when you are home alone or by yourself in a quiet place where you can concentrate. 
And then later when you want to join some friends or just be in the kitchen with your family where you don't have to concentrate as hard, you can still enjoy scrapbooking with very few supplies in front of you. Like you would just need maybe tape, some adhesive, some glue, and a ruler, and you'd have everything you need to complete these pages. All you have to do after that is add your photos. Again, I hope you enjoyed this kit. Until next time, happy crafting!